So good morning, my name is Jason Alexander. I'm the Eastern Pennsylvania Court Entry Consultant. It's September 20th, 2021, and this is our Court Entry Office Hour. Uh, it's specifically, we're gonna talk about resources for Court Entry Specialists. Many of you may be aware of some of these resources, but I just wanna make sure that uh, as our Court Entry Specialists, Regional Managers and Referral Partners, everyone has uh, an understanding of where they can go for help, including a brand new source that is uh, debuting just this month, which I'll talk about under number three. So first and foremost, we do have a court entry policies and procedures manual that has been distributed through a dedicated e-blast if you subscribe to our connect to home mailing list. It's also uh, available in resource two, the court entry specialist toolkit, as well as uh, it was posted to our Court Entry Slack channel, uh, both of which I'll show you in a, in a second. Uh, I just want to make sure that everyone is aware of uh, what's in that manual uh, because we recently updated it uh, and want to make sure that you're aware of it. So if you haven't taken a look at this document or haven't looked at it in a long time and you can see it was updated most recently on September 16th, is that it begins with a section that is a narrative overview of our court entry system, why we have it, what its guiding principles are, the system design, uh, what are the benefits of coordinated entry. This goes back to our original planning work in 2017 uh, and around there on, on design of the system we use today. Uh, as well as a specific court entry requirements, what we mean by court entry and housing first, and the specific responsibilities of the various uh, people that work in our coordinated entry system. The second section, if you haven't looked at it, is our court entry written standards. This comes from a separate document, which is the Eastern Pennsylvania Continuum of Care written standards that is adopted and approved by the governing board. Uh, this is an excerpt from those written standards that is applicable to court entry specialists and referral partners. Uh, which include eligibility for using the court entry system as a uh, as a someone experiencing homelessness or at risk of homelessness. What are the minimum standards of practice that we expect from people that are users of the systems, most specifically our specialists? Uh, the VI SPDAT score by nameless placement guidelines are um, really just meant to um, understand that VI SPDAT score does not dictate whether you are eligible for a specific project like rapid rehousing or permanent supportive housing, but just how to utilize that score uh, in trying to identify the next uh, highest priority candidate household for your rapid rehousing or permanent supportive housing program. If you are a housing provider you, and using our by name list for uh, enrollment. And finally, performance benchmarks, so those are just aspirational benchmarks for what we would ideally want the court entry system to do in terms of how quickly we can help households uh, move into it and frankly move out of it, uh, meaning we want to exit people from court entry as quickly as possible and effectively move help them through our housing providers uh, and our other providers move into permanent housing and out of the system. Then there are very specific court entry policies, which if you have not read, you may be uh, in need of these. Um, and, and this is a good uh, place to look at all of them. Uh, our consumer grievance policy is if someone specifically has an objection to um, how uh, they were treated in the court entry process or, or how they were assessed through court entry, that policy is detailed there for them. Uh, the definition of family policy, if you have not read that, is incredibly important because the way HUD and the continuum of care define family is not the way we typically think of family in our day-to-day -day lives. It's more expansive definition, and it's really important when you are enrolling a household into court entry um, and asking about who is a member of their family that you understand and embrace this broader definition. Uh, we do have a denial of service policy in the rare instance where we need to use that. Uh, an emergency transfer plan for victims of domestic violence, dating violence, sexual assault, stalking, and human trafficking. 
if we have to urge, you know, so we can urgently move people to a safer location. Our housing first policy, which comes uh, directly from the governing board and is applicable to the entire continuum of care as is the inclusion and non-discrimination policy. And finally, um, our referral zone. So as you know, or, sh or should know, um, while the, we have 33 counties in our network and those 33 counties are subdivided into the five uh, regional homeless advisory board regions, we've subdivided those five regions into clusters of referral zones where we think people can be referred in a, in a, in a multiple county basis, maybe just a couple or a few counties that are contiguous and have um, only so many resources that, that it's good to refer people uh, in those zones. And so take, please take a careful look at that. These are all things we can um, talk about if you have questions in our next office hour, uh, if you've had a chance to review it. And then most important, um, we often update in pieces and send through our e-blasts um, updated sections of our core entry procedures but the procedures walk through in, in great detail and with uh, graphic snapshots or screenshots, how to basically um, go through the intake process as a CE specialist. If you're new and, and we're trained, but, but need guidance, look to this. If you've been doing core entry a long time, but you, you're kind of um, winging it at this point, or uh, please take a careful look at the most updated procedures. And these procedures um, have a quick reference guide, um, which in includes a lot of scripts. So if, if you're in a specific moment and an opening of an intake, the closing of an intake, working with a DV survivor or a veteran, um, there's some quick scripts here. They're basically sentences or paragraphs that we'd like all court entry specialists to say. It doesn't mean you have to memorize it or read that, you know, you don't, you don't have to read from it. But basically, you want to be clear about people getting the same information and the same answers and the same service quality, regardless of who they're talking to within our court entry specialist network. We then have um, flow charts, which really uh, help understand that the county eviction moratorium is uh, certainly less important now than it was when uh, over the last several months. Uh, but the flow chart really is kind of shows you the flow of getting the information you need uh, from someone and moving them through the intake process then to, uh, to a successful resolution of that process, as well as followed by detailed uh, policies for our, what we call our CE homeless intake. That's for people that are literally homeless or HUD category one or, and or category one and four that are DV public. Uh, and not asking to be anonymous. Um, that workflow would include details on fielding the VI SPDAT and by nameless placement uh, after basic client intake in the system. And we have a separate intake uh, uh, procedural process for households that are at imminent risk of homelessness by HUD definition, what HUD calls category two and three, and they're most, mostly gonna be category two that you are working with, as you know. Uh, we have a separate intake uh, procedural guidance for households fleeing domestic violence. Who choose to remain anonymous in the system? Um, that's how we protect their information. And it will also uh, demonstrate how to use the smart sheet that exists outside of HMIS so that our regional managers can still connect those anonymous uh, households with um, a housing provider, for example, or a, a direct uh, emergency service provider like a shelter provider. Uh, we've uh, started to add some um, sample notes. We're gonna have more of those as we um, build out the policy manual in the future. Um, and then a great list of um, what do you do when someone that is already in, uh, enrolled in court entry contacts you again? Um, what are the different scenarios in which they do that? What are they asking for? Has their housing situation changed or are they just looking for an update? And so there's a good compilation of what to do in, in all those unique situations. Then we have uh, finally a number of appendices, um, including our uh, partnership agreement. We do have a list of uh, partners who have agreed as organizations and formally signed an, an agreement with the governing board which would allow them to participate in our by nameless meetings. 
And so we wanna make sure that as new providers who are working with households in, in your region and might be able to help them um, move quickly through the system um, and appropriately should participate in those by nameless meetings that they have as organizations sign the agreement allowing their staff to participate. We have a referral zone map. We have our um, uh, a broader notice of consent uh, for non-HMIS participants. Uh, so um, if people are not are choosing not to participate in, in the rare case, uh, enter their they refuse to have their information entered in HMIS at all. Um, but that they want our services, there's a there's a long um, participant agreement that would have to be read and that they would agree to to do that. It's, it's extremely rare, but it's there. Um, we have a brand new Appendix D for some new emergency housing voucher programs that have just been funded by HUD for the first time. This is not a process that uh, your standard CE specialist needs to uh, be concerned with, but it's certainly there and it's important if you are actually one of those emergency housing voucher providers or a regional manager, for example, helping uh, uh, guide them into enrolling a household. And finally, we have, again, starting to collect more sample court entry notes um, that are just quick reference. So it's extremely important to um, be, um, as a CE specialist in particular, and as a referral provider, that is engaging someone that's been referred to uh, you by court entry or that you are enrolling, uh, attempting to enroll from the by name list, that we have excellent notes. And the rule of thumb is that if a note relates in any way to a person who is, or a household that is or enrolled in court entry and it's a note about something happening related to their court entry enrollment, including starting to engage them in your program um, or, or not being able to, those notes really matter when uh, folks contact us again or new providers try to work with them and need a documentation of what's been the experience through court entry. If a note is specific to a program you have enrolled someone in to after court entry or referred to from court entry, but it's specific or uh, enrolled through the by name list, but it's specific to their enrollment in your project or program, then you use the standard HMIS case notes. You do not use the court entry notes. So that's really the difference between the two. So if you have not had, and this, you know, it's quite a lengthy document. It's, we certain, I, you know, it's a great um, uh, weekend reading, or maybe it's not too late to get to the beach one more time. Nothing like reading 150 pages of policies and procedures to make that um, a really uh, more fun experience, but in all seriousness, it, it, these are incredibly important. And if you weren't aware that we have them all in one place and that are updating these regularly, uh, it's, it's be very important for you to, to have this accessible and take a careful look at it. So that is a preview of um, really an extensive preview of that resource for specialists. We will be by probably by the end of 2021 updating the written standards for all projects. And so that would include updated written standards for court entry. And when those are available, uh, you'll be able to see those then. If you have, again, if you have a question about uh, what I'm talking through on resources for court entry, um, please post in the chat and I'll be sure to answer that um, before we conclude this section. So court entry specialist toolkit, if you click through this link, and again, I uh, posted this document in the chat, and if you're not able to access it because you joined after, sometimes you can't go back to a chat post, um, I'll repost it uh, before the end of this office hour. But um, this specialist toolkit really compiles everything that specialists need at any given moment, including our referral matrix, our policies and procedures manual, any additional kind of mini uh, descriptions of some of our more detailed procedures, particularly if we've updated it and or it's brand new, but we haven't added it to the policy and procedure manual yet. It'll be in that toolkit as well as some other reference materials related to, for example, fielding the VI spadats. The third resource uh, that I'm really excited to unveil are is a brand new set of um, a brand new function in HMIS, which is actually 
a library of training videos and reading materials. And I'm gonna show you how to get to those because they are already in our system and we are slowly putting them together. So uh, over time, there'll be, um, oops, over time, there'll be more of them to share and uh, you should keep checking to, to make sure uh, you've always got uh, the most recent ones posted. So now I'm gonna uh, properly share my screen and show you what those look like. So if you log into uh, client track and you've probably seen this new section, it's in the client menu uh, for one above our court entry uh, um, sub menu, but it says PAH and minus training. And actually if you click training videos, this is a complete list of um, videos that were uh, previously posted or continue to be posted on our YouTube channel. Um, but now they are accessible ex directly in HMIS, meaning you can watch these video recordings or you can pop them out and watch them in your, your, in your web browser. And so the first thing I wanna say is there are obviously more videos here and you'll see these in the reading materials too that pertain to other aspects of HMIS and in some cases for other continuums of care that use PAHMIS. But if you um, pull open the category uh, drop down menu and just select Eastern COC court entry, you're going to see only videos that are specifically for us. And right now we posted recordings of our two most recent brown bag lunch series, but our regional managers and our, our DV specialists are working on a series of uh, video trainings. And when that series is complete, hopefully uh, by or October 1st or, or shortly after, those videos will all be accessible here. And once they are, um, you can watch them by clicking show video under watch here. And you can see that um, it starts playing. And um, it's, it, it's amazing unless you have to watch yourself uh, on video. That's the only time it's not great. Uh, so we'll be posting additional videos there. Uh, and then there's a second sub menu item for reading materials. And what is great about this is, again, um, it, we're just starting to use this and populate it. Um, but what's great about this is eventually we'll be able to really eliminate um, the Google toolkit, or at least that'll be an option. But again, if you pull open the document type menu and select court entry, you're just going to get materials that are specifically for us. Right now, I've posted the most recent quarterly data report, if you haven't taken a look at that, showing data trends at the um, COC, RAB, and county level related to court entry, intake, and referral. Our most recent referral matrix will always be posted here from now on, and the policies and procedures manual that I just went through and basically just by clicking the blue arrow, you can download these files. So we'll be adding more files over time and we'll be keeping them updated over time. And the remainder I can go through reasonably quickly. I'll bring the um, slide back up and just go through the rest of these. Uh, if you're not a subscriber to our Connect to Home uh, email newsletter, uh, please contact me using the email address and under number nine, my email, and I'll add you to the list. We actually uh, have two lists. We have a broader list for everyone that uh, is interested in court entry news, events, updates, et cetera. Um, and then we have a dedicated subsection of that that are, are just for court entry specialists. And um, all of the more detailed procedural updates, referral matrix updates, uh, training, event, updates tend to, to go through that. You may not realize you're on both lists, but if you're a court entry specialist or manager or supervisor, you are on both lists. And so you're getting more e uh, emails, but keep in mind that if we have referral partners or just folks that are interested in what we're doing, they're not getting all the emails you do. And, and if you're a CE specialist, uh, yes, you're gonna get a lot of emails from me and um, we just wanna make sure you're updated. Uh, if you are subscribed and you feel like you're not getting enough emails uh, or haven't remember, don't recall getting any recently, please just check your junk or spam folder because these are coming from MailChimp um, directly and maybe your um, filter is blocking uh, mass blasts from MailChimp. So take a look at that. Um, next, we have a court entry Slack channel. 
This is a heavily underutilized uh, part of our system. Uh, it has replaced, uh, but it's but it's also really important, and it's um, it did replace the uh, old um, the work group uh, workspace we had. I don't remember what it's workplace. Workplace is gone, and in its in its uh, stead is our Slack channel. You can either access it on the web or through a dedicated application like I am now. And actually, we have. Uh, some other great channels. Uh, we have a, an HMIS channel, which um, uh, Tony is uh, posting a lot of FAQs, but also other trainings related to using HMIS here that would um, not be CE specific trainings, but could be really helpful to you there. Uh, the Eastern PACOC has a, a general channel and any news of interest to housing and homeless service providers will be posted here by various people. Uh, and we have our court entry system channel. And that's where anything I email blast out, I also post here for those who are not subscribed or you've lost track of your emails because I send so many of them and you just want to be able to scroll back and see And this is dated. So as you scroll up, you get older ones, uh, older posts that is. But also if you um, hover over, or I'm not sure how you get to it on the web, but there are pin posts. The pin posts are ones that are really important. The most recent manual, the most recent matrix, um, some breaking news around when we've made major changes in HMIS. And so I'll pin and unpin these as, as they are relevant as best I can. But what I, I don't think people realize is you can also use this as a chat. So if you're reading uh, something I've pinned or, or posted or someone else has, and you have a question, uh, you can actually uh, use this as a message board and uh, would love for you to do that if that's easier than an email uh, if you have a question or you just want to start a conversation around coordinated entry so we have our slack channel and would love to see it more heavily used um, and so that's the next resource um, we have our office hours they have previously been twice a month it probably they're moving to monthly uh, but they'll be a little bit longer and like to, um, um, today, they, they should typically start now with some sort of uh, overview or refresher or new information that are applicable to all court entry users before moving into an open Q&A. That'll be the new format moving forward. Uh, and then specific questions. If you have questions that are really client specific or procedural specific, your first point of contact should be your call center supervisor if you are a 211 CE specialist or your regional manager if you are an access site specialist and they are accessible to you um, and their information is available on our webpage, which uh, I actually didn't list here. It's a 10th resource. We have a dedicated webpage that's available through the uh, Pennsylvania COC.org website um, and I can post the link in, for that in, in just a minute when I'm done. If you are having HMIS functionality problems, if something is not working the way it's supposed to, or if you have an idea on how something in PAHMIS could work better, the ideal thing to do is submit a help ticket in PAHMIS. Uh, and if you don't know, real quickly, I wanna show that um, in case you haven't been doing that. Um, so wherever you are, let's say you are working with a client and you know wherever you are in our, our sub menu, whatever page you're on or screen you're on and there's a, an issue, it's ideal if you actually post your help question from the screen where you were having a problem because there is some secret hidden coding there that allows the HMIS administrator and help ticket team uh, to take a look at exactly what you were doing, how you were logged in, I don't mean this in the Mr. Robot way, like it can see whether you're drinking coffee or eating um, Doritos, but I just mean it, it captures what screen you're on, how you're logged into the system, what you were doing, and might even reveal some information about what the problem you're having. So uh, the stop where you are if you have a problem and you're able to, depending on whether you're talking with someone in crisis or not, uh, or come back to it. And then you can see up here, you can click the help menu. From the help menu, you wanna click report an issue. You can fill out a summary of the issue, uh, which is really the subject line. It can be brief, 
the more details you provide, the better we'll be able to troubleshoot the problem. Uh, and you can attach one or more files, specifically, let's say a screenshot of what problem you're having or what suggestion you'd like to make for something better. And then you're required to give your email address and phone number. You are welcome to, but not required to add additional people to the help ticket. And most likely that would be myself as the CE specialist, I'm sorry, the CE consultant, uh, because I can help troubleshoot these with the HMIS team and I may be assigned a specific court entry uh, uh, ticket anyway. But if another member of the team is assigned that ticket, um, I might still, I'm often can provide knowledge just because I live and breathe in, in the system every day. And the way you would add someone um, if you don't know is you'd click on, uh, we actually have an address book in the system. It's just hard to get to. So if you click the little magnifying glass, you actually need to switch. You can't just search there because it defaults to, I'm sorry, it defaults when you start to clients. There's really no way to uh, change that, but I'm sorry, defaults to my caseload. There's no way to change that. But if you open that up and click users, those are system users. Uh, and you can search for a system user by name. Like, uh, let's say you want to add Chris Cap as your regional manager. You can scroll down there. And if you just click, Chris's information will be populated. If someone is a system user and doesn't have their phone number entered in the system and it's just blank, um, you actually can't submit until you're required to put in a phone number. It's perfectly acceptable to do this. If you don't know the person that you're adding, if you just don't know what their number is, it doesn't matter because most of these are going to be email communications anyway. Um, and you can add multiple people. Let's say you're um, a call center CE specialist, you have a help ticket issue, you submit it. Um, it's going to go always to Tony Diaz, our HMS administrator, and he's going to decide and assign a person to fix it. Um, but if you want to notify additional people because they're your supervisor or you think I might be able to help, as I said, you can add multiple people. You could add Patricia. Uh, you could add um, really anyone. Emily, you could add a regional manager and you certainly could add me or one of your peers if you think that they're having the same problem. Adding someone means they'll be notified when an update to the ticket has happened. So I think the other secret to submitting a help ticket is um, the way you find out that your ticket is being worked on is that you will get an email notification from the system with the help ticket number. Um, and it's, it's not going to actually be a message of the, what someone's telling you, the person working on your ticket, for example. It's only going to be a generic um, statement of that something's been added to the help ticket and you should click through it, log in and respond right away. Because typically one of us, whoever is working on the help ticket, reads the ticket and says, I need, I need to ask one question to help solve this. And the way they do that is they reply to your help ticket in the ticket thread in HMIS and you get that email notification. If you ignore that or don't respond to it, we can't work on the ticket. Um, and we can't update you on the fix. And we can't ask you to test whether we fixed it. And then finally, the last thing we need you to do is verify that it's been fixed so we can close the ticket and know that we've successfully resolved the issue. So that's, that's how help tickets work. And they're really important. And especially for working um, in, you know, in HMIS and when you have HMIS related um, issues, challenges, ideas. If it's not an HMIS related issue, if it's not about client track or how the system functions in client track, um, and you haven't been able to get a, a successful answer from your call center supervisor or regional manager, which I'm sure would never be the case, but let's say they are out of the office and it's urgent, you can always, uh, the last resort is uh, email me directly. Um, and I will either respond with uh, help or I will connect you with someone else who is the right person to help. So when you take all this together, what we're hoping is that you become aware, more aware of the fact that we really are trying to support the work of our court entry specialists in particular, but many of these resources are also valuable for our, our referral partners, whether they're getting email referrals uh, through the system as, for example, shelters, 
or street outreach or um, homeless prevention providers, or whether they're using the by name list as rapid rehousing or permanent supportive housing providers. Um, everything you might need is here and every way you might need to contact us is here. So what I'd uh, just like to do is check and make sure that there are uh, no questions and I don't see any questions in the chat. So um, thank you very much uh, for this, uh, listening to this section uh, and this presentation on resources for specialists.